Are you anemic on God's word? Or are you just living on some bullet points that you Googled? Or are you actually digging in God's word on a daily, consistent basis? We're going to be talking about reading God's word today. Sean Paul here with Life is Jesus Christ. As usual, I always thank you all for tuning in. I just want this program, this podcast, this video, this radio message, whatever it may be, and how you're hearing it, I want it to be a blessing to your life. I want it to radically transform and change your life into somebody that is chasing God and is zealous for God and is zealous for the things of God. You know, that's the way we should be living. You know, a lot of people, uh, I remember years ago, there was a song that said that Jesus Freak, uh, I think it was by DC Talk. We lo- I love that song. Why? Because I love to be a Jesus Freak. Yes, yeah, some people may be a- uncomfortable around somebody that actually is a Jesus Freak, somebody that loves God, chases God, and, you know, is fundamental about putting God first in their life. But you know what? I have more peace in my life, more joy in my life, more victory in my life because I'm living for God. And that's the only way that I'm going to live life. Well, we're going to uh, be talking about reading God's word. We're continuing this whole entire series of of developing intimacy with God. And uh, the next key or the next uh, tip or, or way to develop intimacy with God is read God's word. But before we get into that, we did have a couple things that we need to wrap up about praying. Uh, we were talking about praying last time and different types of prayers. And before, uh, like I said, I get into the meat of the message today, I would just like to go ahead and wrap up that section. It's just going to take a couple seconds here or a couple minutes. Uh, but anyway, you know, I want to warn you about praying. And it's also the same thing with reading God's word. You know, uh, our flesh doesn't really want to pray, doesn't really want to read God's word. And it's something that you have to develop in your life, develop in your heart to where it it becomes a lifestyle and 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 a spiritual habit that you've created. Once you do that, it's really hard to break because it's something that you have developed and you're consistent in, in doing so again, praying and reading God's word. But I wanted to give you a tip on, on how to implement this and how to imp- implement an actual uh, habit in your life to do so. And uh, there's two scriptures that I'm going to share with you, and I'm just telling you right now, they have radically changed my life. These scriptures have radically changed my life, and uh, I believe that there will be a massive blessing to you as well. First one is Proverbs 6, uh, 16.3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. This is from the King James Version. I actually found this scripture while going to college in the early, yes, 90s. November of 90 is when I started college, uh, American Institute of Business in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, but anyway... Um, this is a scripture I found, and really what I did is I implemented and utilized this scripture as far as in studying and, uh, you know, studying the books and all the curriculum and, uh, and things that I was uh, taking college for, which was business and sales and marketing. And um, so anyway, when I went to go take tests, I just claimed the scripture. I said, Lord, I did my work. I did I did uh, uh, my part in studying, and I'm committing my life to you as in meaning serving you and, and going to fulfill uh, uh, your plan and purpose for my life, and I thank you that you established my thoughts. Now, I wasn't the sharpest tool in the drawer in high school. I'm sure a lot of that was attributed to just goofing off uh, and not really wanting to buckle down and study, but I'm just telling you, I've just not always been the most studious Uh, fella as far as in school. And I can tell you this, I was on the dean's list at the college. So I believe this scripture is an awesome scripture to implement in as far as in wanting and desiring to read God's word and to pray. And I'll explain that in a second. But then also Philippians 2.13, again, these are my two very favorite scriptures. Uh, They have changed my life. So for God is working in you, and this is New, New Living Translation, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Well, do you think reading God's word and praying is going to give or or please God? Yes, absolutely. If you're somebody that's studious of God's word and you want to spend consistent uh, time in praying and spending time with God, 
it's going to please God. So I think this scripture, I know, not I think, I know that this scripture will be fulfilled uh, in your life in the sense of saying, God, I submit my life to you. I want to have a desire to serve you. I want to chase after you. I want to fulfill your plan and purpose. So see, when you pray these things and when you submit yourself unto God, when you commit your works unto the Lord, guess what? Your thoughts are going to be established, you know, uh, because I remember years ago, there's this man, uh, this gentleman, he's a minister of the gospel. And one of the things that he said is one of the hardest things in life is to discern the voice of the Lord. Is it God that's uh, speaking to me or is it my flesh or is it the world speaking to me? And, you know, I'm not going to say that I made fun of that, but I, I kind of thought, hmm, that's really interesting. And I can tell you this. As I am growing more and more in ministry and I'm looking at more avenues of ministry, possibilities, so to speak, and seeing uh, uh, directions that I could go in ministry, I'm not going to say that it's confusion, but sometimes you really have to buckle down and really, really uh, tune in and spend time with God to really discern the dire direction that he's wanting you to go. So I really believe that this scripture is very, very important. So like I said, I just pray this consistently and constantly in my life uh, in the sense of saying, God, I just praise you and thank you. I'm committing my whole entire life to you. I'm committing everything to you. And, and because I'm committing my works unto you, I believe you're establishing my thoughts in my life. And Father God, I want to live a life pleasing to you. I want to live a life of submission to you. I want to live in in, in reverence to you and in awe of you. And, and so, Father God, I just praise you and thank you that you're going to give me the desire and power to do what pleases you. So in saying all that, I believe what happens is the Holy Spirit just just answers your prayer and basically fills your desire. Uh, yourself with a desire to read God's word, to spend time in prayer, and then he gives you power to do so, meaning just kind of overcoming the flesh and what the flesh wants, and then your whole entire thought life is being established by God. So to me, that's just, that That to me just get builds a foundation in my life as far as in what I build my life upon. And I think because of this, I am consumed with God on a daily basis. Now, some of you might say, whoa, you just need to dial down in life. No, I don't need to dial down in life. I think there's a lot of people that need to dial it up. You know, that's my belief system. My belief system is the more of God you can get, the more better that you're going to be in life. Now, you know, there's a saying that I've heard before, uh, you're so full of God that you're no good, you know. I mean, again, these stupid comments come from the world, but unfortunately, sometimes Christians will pick up on that as well, and they'll say the same thing. And, you know, I think sometimes, you know, you know again, I'm just going to say it, and I'm going to say it the way I believe it, and, you know, some people may get offended when I say this, but I just think it rubs Christians the wrong way in the sense that these are Christians that are wanting more to walk in the flesh, they're wanting to be more carnal than they are wanting to be spiritual. And I'm not saying I'm a spiritual, super spiritual guy. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is, is people that chase after the Spirit of God doesn't get so rubbed the wrong way when people are, are encouraging them to run the race in God and to chase after God. They just don't get rubbed the wrong way. They get encouraged. And I'm going to tell you something. I used to be there. I used to be there where people would would encourage me to want to run the race even more so, and they would be making suggestions and so forth and telling me things about the Word, and i just get rubbed the wrong way. I was a believer in Christ. I was someone that loved God. I was someone that would pray. I would be someone that would go to church, but it would rub me the wrong way. But what's happened to me over the years is I have gravitated more and more and more to where my whole life is consumed with God. So when someone encourages me to run that race, I'm like, tell me more. I want to know more. Why? Because I am so pumped on Jesus. I love living for Jesus. I love living my life for Jesus. I love doing everything I can to live for Jesus and encourage other people to live for Jesus as well. Well, anyway, hopefully that blessed you. But like I said, I just wanted to throw that out there and, and encourage you 
to to really look at these two scriptures again, Proverbs 16, 16 3, KJV, King James Version, and then Philippians 2 13, New Living Translation Version. And and it's not that one version is better than over the other. I just like the way each one reads in each version. Um, and just chew on those a little bit, implement those in your life. And I believe that as you pray over your life with those scriptures, you will see a radical transformation take place in your life. Okay, well, let's go ahead and jump on God's word. Now, again, uh, you know, uh, some people might say, well, you just think you're a super spiritual Christian. And again, I'm not 100%. And how I'm going to tell you that is, is this, is that Reading God's word used to be a, a chore for me. It used to be a, 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 an issue for me in my life to where I did not consistently put God's word first. So again, I'm someone that's still growing in God. I'm still learning from God. I'm still being corrected by God's word, being corrected by individuals that's, that's involved in my life, showing me, hey, maybe this is another way you need to look at it. These are people that, like, like my pastor, uh, my pastor has a voice in my life. I submit my life to my pastor. Um, I have a, um, a, a, a a father in the faith that used to be the pastor of the church. He's no longer the pastor of the church. He has a voice in my life. So what I'm saying is 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 you know I believe uh, that that I have grown over the years and I'm still growing over the years. So. Uh, I'm not a super spiritual Christian. I'm just somebody that's still learning how to chase God and chasing God more and more every day of my life. So I just want to encourage other people to do the same, to chase after God, run after God. So again, saying that, that you know, God's word is something that I did not consistently read and consistently partake on a consistent basis. But I see myself more and more every day doing so. Again, I'm not there. Sometimes there's days or mornings where I say, I don't have time. I'm slammed right now. I can't do it. You know, so so there are days that I say, today I just cannot partake. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that, I'm not there yet, and I'm still growing in this, but I encourage you to, to perfect yourself in this area in your life. So what is God's word? To me, God's word is his love letters to us. I mean, so make reading God's word a priority in your life should be a part of your daily routine. You know, uh, you know to me, I just look like this. I believe that we should get up early enough to read God's word and to pray before we do anything else during the day. Now, you might say, Sean, that's not going to work with my schedule. You know, I'm a night owl guy. I, I, I would rather read at night. I'd rather pray at night. Go for it. You know, if you have a, a, a split shift, so to speak, and you say, okay, I'm going to work in the morning and then I work later in the afternoon. I have a split shift. I'm going to go read at noon. That go for it. I'm not saying that you need to stay in the morning time. I just like the morning time myself because there's just no distractions. You know, I get up at around 5:15, 5:30. I'm usually out the door by 5:45 to six o'clock to go exercise, and then you know I come back and either I prayed while I'm walking or I'll pray in my office, and then I will spend some time in reading the Word. That's before I get my day started. And the reason being, like I said, I just don't have the distractions uh, in the morning. So that's why I enjoy the morning. So, you know, as, as we read the Word of God, it's really important to implement the Holy Spirit. You know, um, when we implement the Holy Spirit into the time of reading, we are allowing Him to to bring the uh, uh, to illuminate the truth to us I mean to to you know help us see the wisdom that has been shed into the Word of God so we can reap the wisdom into our lives you know I just have seen some people I have witnessed some people in our in, in my life to where you know you know and again I'm not saying this in a way to I'm not saying this to judge them but what I'm saying is you know that they've come from simple education. Uh, you know, again, you know, you just know that they barely, let's just say this, they barely passed high school. Let's just use that example. Uh, they barely uh, passed high school, but over the years, you have seen them be a student of God's word, constantly, consistently reading God's word, applying God's word in their lives. 
They are some of the wisest people I have ever met in my life. You could ask them spiritual questions and, uh, you know, questions that would be uh, applicable to us in our life today, and they could shed some amazing wisdom to you. Why? Because they chew and feed on God's word on a consistent, constant basis. And that is for you as well. That's for all of us. It's it's available to us if we would just learn to chew on God's word on a consistent, constant basis in our daily life. And again, you know, this whole series is about developing intimacy with God. And, you know, this would be amongst prayer. This would be one of the high, this would be one of the highest things to implement intimacy in your life is through reading God's word. Amen. So God, you know, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. He is your counselor. You know, he comes directly from God. He speaks only what he hears from the Lord and Jesus. You know, he's going to testify about Jesus and he's going to tell you things, like I said, that he has heard and he can actually tell you about your future as well. So see, to me, we should say, Holy Spirit, I'm about ready to read the word. I'm ready to rightly divide the word. I'm ready to go ahead and chew on this word. Show me, lead me, and guide me as I read this word to, to help me understand God's word more so. Now, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I was uh, working on this message. This message is, is still, uh, I'm still chewing on it. I've got maybe, I think, two more sections to work on on this message. And I just kind of chew on it, on it, probably on a daily basis or every other day basis. And, uh, you know, it's just like yesterday, I'm like, Holy Spirit, I'm just not seeing this. Help me understand this. And it's just like, okay, just go take a break. So as I went and took a break, um, I don't remember exactly what I did on my break, but I came came back to the desk and I started chewing on it again. And boom, it just started flowing. So it's just like the Holy Spirit says, okay, just chill, just chill out, you know, just dial things down. I know you're kind of getting a little tense because you're not seeing exactly what you want to see in in this scripture. Just go take a break, dial things down, come back. And it's just like the Holy Spirit just started flowing inside of me. And I was just blazing away, uh, typing away in what I believe that he was sharing with me and showing me as far as in the word and how to properly put it together so I can share this word. So see, it's just so important to always have the Holy Spirit present while you're reading God's word. So let's go ahead and read John 1, 1, 5. It says, in the beginning, the word already already existed. Who's the word? Jesus. Jesus is the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him. Nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his light brought light to everyone and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never be extinguished. So again, the word of God is Jesus. Amen. And then also the word of God is the bread of life. So just as you need food, just as you need to partake in good quality food, you know, I'm not a perfect nutritionist. I'm not somebody that. Uh, is all knowledgeable in that, but I definitely uh, partake in knowledge and understanding. I'm reading a book right now about managing your glucose. I'm not a diabetic, but I believe it's important to do those things now, not later in life. So to me, I'm reading that right now. See, I eat that up. I enjoy it. I understand or I enjoy trying to understand things about health and nutrition and about eating properly. I like to uh, make sure that as I'm eating throughout the day, I'm eating quality foods. There, I can tell you this. My body will respond quickly to uh, garbage, eating garbage. I, you know, they're invariably, you know, I live in Guatemala, so um, and, and for many of you that are not aware of Guatemala and they're not aware of maybe the health and the food and things like that, um, you know, it's cheaper to eat healthy than it is to eat bad. That's just really what it comes down to. You can go to the grocery store, fresh fruits, fresh vegetables is just always going to be substantially cheaper than eating like candy, box cereals, things from the U.S. It's just always going to be cheaper to eat that way. And uh, also chicken. Chicken's like one of their staple meats here. Uh, beef is not 
Well, it's just not quality, uh, and and I just don't eat a lot of beef. So what I eat a lot of is tilapia and chicken. So see, I eat a very healthy diet. So when I go to the United States, it's just like a shock to your body. All the um, preservatives in the food, uh, you know, things that like high salt, sodium, just a lot of things. It really slams your body. And after a good thirty days in the states. My blood pressure's gone up. I feel sluggish. I don't feel good. So see, my body can tell when I'm not eating right. And it will tell me very fast. So see, to me, I always want to uh, just practice a good quality uh, diet. And then the other final thing is my body will respond quickly to sugar. Uh, uh, and, and it's not, you know, the again, I'm not a diabetic. I'm not, yeah, I'm not a diabetic. That's probably the best way to say it is my my joints you know i walk a lot i you know, occasionally run you know so i walk a lot and so if i walk a lot and i ate sugar that week it starts affecting my joints so see the thing of it is is i just stay away from that stuff so it's the same thing with the word of god the bread of life what we need to do is we need to partake of the fresh bread of life i don't care if the word of god has been written over 2,000 years ago, you know, in meaning it was uh, written, I think it was written over like 1,500 years. It could be wrong on that. It was like written over 1,500 years and it's still fresh today. It's still live and real today. It's still applicable today. There's so many people that will try to tell you that, you know, it's so antiquated. You know, you need to change with the times. No, people need to live according to the word of God. I'm telling you, I live according to the word of God. I I, I, I adjust my life according to the word of God and it's still applicable. I am not, you know, so off kilter that I can't function in this world. I can function quite well in this world and still live according to the word of God. And so see, to me, when we live on the fresh truth of God's word, guess what? You're going to see yourself living a life of victory, peace, joy. You're going to see God operating in your life. You're going to see the fullness in your life. You're going to see yourself developing such a healthy, intimate relationship with God because you are partaking of the bread of life, Jesus. You're partaking of Jesus. Hallelujah. So anyway, let's go ahead and continue on. Matthew 4, 4 says this, but Jesus told him, no, no. The scripture said, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So I basically already preached about the bread of life. So, but again, if you want to develop an ongoing relationship with the Lord, read your Bible. Amen. And then also, if you want to know the author and the finisher of your faith, read your Bible. As you do that, you'll discover who Jesus is. You'll discover who God is. You'll see yourself going into a greater, deeper relationship with God. So let's go ahead and go to Timothy 3, 16, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. You know, uh, okay, I was in a jump jump, and, and, and get ahead in my message, so I'm going to continue on. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now, years ago, I was a, uh, a soldier in the United States Army. Um, I served in Germany and also in Fort Knox, Kentucky. And one thing in the army, they have something called an SOP. It's that's an acronym for standard operating procedures. So we had an SOP on everything. There's an SOP on everything in the military. So basically, it's a set of instructions covering those features of operation which lend themselves to de to a definite and standardized procedure without loss of effectiveness. So basically what it's going to do is tell you exactly how to do whatever procedure you're doing. If you're going to work on a vehicle, they have an SOP for that. They have an SOP for maintenance. You know, uh, if you're going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, manage the office, the, the, the company office or the battalion office, there's an SOP for that. You know, there's night duty, like you're actually watching 
um, the 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 grounds, the building, the billocks, uh, the barracks, whatever it may be. There's a standard of operation for that. So see, there's always an SOP for everything. God has an SOP as well, and it's his written word. But guess what? We'll continue on next time uh, when we pick this back up, and I'll share with you about the SOP, and then I'll share with you on how I applied that SOP, so to speak, in my own personal life in a situation in our church. So Let's go ahead and pray before we go. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for all those that are listening right now, watching the video, hearing it on radio, podcast, wherever it may be. I just pray that you bless them abundantly, Father God. Help them, inspire them to read your word, Father God, to chew on your word and to live by your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And as always, I want to pray for those that don't know Christ, that wants to serve God. Father, uh, That d- just follow after me as I pray this. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to give my life to you. I want to serve you, and I want to make your son, Jesus, the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you went to the cross for me. You shed your blood that I might that I will have salvation and forgiveness of my sin. Forgive me of all my sin, and I am ready to live for you now. Help me to live this life for you. Help me find a church that I can be discipled in and to serve in. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, Glory, thank you so much for listening to this message. Thank you that uh, you allow me to be a blessing to your life. Stay tuned because we have so much more. Bye-bye. Hello, Sean Paul here with Life is Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for watching. Our prayer is that your life is inspired to run the race in Jesus Christ. Have an amazing day. God bless you. Bye-bye.